we can't predict exactly when earthquakes are going to occur, but we can actually predict statistically how likely certain sized earthquakes are to occur in a given time period. So for example, in New Zealand, we know that on average over the last 100 years, we've had a magnitude 7 earthquake every 10 years. The likelihood of having an approximate magnitude 6 earthquake in New Zealand is quite high. It probably happens once a year. Uh, the real question is, does it occur right underneath a city? And obviously that likelihood is lower, but is still possible. I like the, the saying that the number of faults in a region is proportional to the number of geologists looking for them. But loosely speaking, the large faults that we've sort of identified as causing a significant seismic hazard, there's on the order of about five to 600 of those, but that number continues to increase as we do more research. This is one web-based tool that uh, displays all of the major mapped faults in New Zealand. Currently, the colour coding is identifying the three different tectonic types. So in blue, we have the crustal faults, in red, we have subduction faults, uh, and in yellow, we have volcanic faults. If I click on this section of the Alpine fault, uh, we can see that it's denoted as a crustal fault. Uh, if this section of the fault ruptures, it's expected to cause an earthquake of magnitude 7.85 and we can watch a simulation of ground motion. We're now uh, about 30 seconds into the rupture. As it proceeds with time, the fault breaks from one end toward the other. The ground motion radiates outwards from the fault rupture and propagates over this region of the South Island. Uh, researchers have made models of around 15,000 different earthquakes uh, that can occur in New Zealand and the ground shaking that's produced. And we've, as a discipline, benefited hugely from increases in computing power and our ability to collect more and more data. The data uh, that we accumulate uh, is mainly from a network of seismic instruments. Uh, and so there's on the order of about 500 different uh, instruments located throughout New Zealand that collect high quality data on a largely continuous basis. Uh, and we use that data from both small earthquakes and also large earthquakes uh, to understand the way in which ground shaking occurs. Uh, and that really helps improve our models. And we, as a result, have this sort of continuous iteration uh, between predicting what will happen observing what happens, using that to learn about our models and then improving them. The really large faults, they tend to leave significant scars on the landscape, so they create the mountains that we see. But then for a given fault geometry, and if we use the example of the 411 kilometre section of the Alpine Fault, there's different ways that that fault could break. It could initiate at the southern end, somewhere down near Fiordland, and rupture northward towards Arthur's Pass. Or alternatively, it could actually start at Arthur's Pass and rupture southward towards Fiordland. Then for any individual one of those cases, there could be a large amount of movement underneath Mount Cook, or there could be a small amount of movement underneath Mount Cook. And so we build different models that account for that. We do it statistically, so we can consider many possibilities. Uh, and then we incorporate that in an uncertainty context in order to predict what might happen in the future.